All right, guys, Epiphone versus Gibson. Have Epiphone guitars gotten too good compared to the Gibson guitars? Epiphone guitars are generally thought of as the cheaper versions of the Gibson guitars. You can get a Gibson SG or an Epiphone SG, a Gibson Les Paul or an Epiphone Les Paul. Pretty much all of the classic Gibson models can be purchased as Epiphone models as well, but at a much cheaper price. But at this point, I think it's possible that Epiphone guitars have gotten so good that there's just not much reason left to go out and spend all that money on a true Gibson guitar, aside from just being able to show off the brand name to your friends. So the guitar that I want to use as an example is this beautiful Epiphone Carina Flying V. Just look at this thing. Now what's interesting about this guitar is this Flying V is based off of the 1958 version. And that's different from the versions that came later on in the 60s. I prefer this earlier style and these guitars are pretty easy to recognize because where the body meets the neck here, the body comes down a little further on the neck and the fretboard and then also you have a more pointed headstock up here where the, the later versions have a more round point to them. I think these actually look a little bit more metal with that pointed headstock and the fret access is better on these earlier versions. Now let's talk about the specs of this guitar real quick. So it's a Carina body. It's a mahogany neck. Of course, it's a set neck joint. We've got Grover tuners up here. The fretboard has 22 frets on a Pau Ferro fretboard. And we've got two Epiphone Alnico Classic humbuckers. Also, another really cool little detail, you can see that on the bottom of the body there. That's sort of an anti-slip pad, so you can hold the guitar on your legs and it'll keep it from sliding off. Now, this guitar I actually bought used, and I bought it from a buddy of mine, but you can still find these guitars pretty often on the used market, and they're usually around the seven to $800 range. And the more standard Epiphone Flying Vs, the non-Carina ones with just a standard mahogany body, those go for around 650 new. Now, I love this guitar. It is a great guitar, really fun guitar to play. Uh, but another thing I like from Epiphone is their Prophecy series, because those are basically taking all of the classic Gibson models and then modernizing them. So you get 24 fret fretboards in most cases, you know, nice binding, sometimes quilt tops, that kind of stuff. And they end up not costing that much more than the standard models. Anyway, I'm really hoping I can check out some of the Prophecy models in the future. But now let's go ahead and get into the demo of this guitar. I want you guys to listen to how this guitar sounds, especially with these uh, Epiphone Alnico humbuckers here. But now real quick, guys, if you enjoy videos like this and you enjoy checking out cool new guitars and affordable gear and you have not already subscribed, please consider subscribing right now. Okay, let's go ahead and plug this in. I'm gonna use my Fender GTX 100 amplifier. We'll go through a few presets in there and listen to how it sounds. Let's check it out.
Okay guys, so now let's talk a little bit about this guitar, the playability and the sound. So playing wise, this is a great, just really fun guitar to play. It has a very, uh, very classic feeling C-shaped neck like you would expect to find on a Gibson guitar from this era. I should say that the late 50s era, not when this guitar was made. This is of course, you know, it's an Epiphone reissue and everything. But again, really comfortable neck. Also, the, again, the fret access, like I mentioned before, the fret access on this guitar is so, so good because the body just gets out of the way of your hand there. So you can easily, easily hit that 22nd fret, you know, do a big bend on it. You could even, if they had 24 frets on this guitar, you could get up to that real easily too. I mean, I can get my finger all the way over the uh, neck pickup if I, want, if I wanted to. Now these guitars, the high-end Epiphones, are made really, really well. And so the frets are nicely leveled. There's no sharp fret ends or anything like that. The frets on this guitar are not super tall, not super big frets. These, I think, would be considered medium jumbo frets. And I personally, I do like bigger frets. So that is one thing about this guitar that I wish was a little bit different. And when I mentioned the Prophecy series from Epiphone earlier, that's one thing that I really like about that series, is on some of those guitars, they use nice big frets on those. Now let's talk about the balance of this guitar a little bit. For a Flying V, it balances pretty well. And by that, I mean when you stand up with it and you have a guitar strap on, it doesn't have terrible neck dive. A lot of Flying Vs, really most Flying Vs, unless the body is just extremely heavy, most Flying Vs do have uh, neck dive problems, or at the very least, they don't balance perfectly. And this guitar is like that. This guitar does not have real bad neck dive, but it doesn't have the great balance that you would get with a guitar that has an upper horn up here where, where it can move the strap button uh, connection point, anchor point or whatever. When you have that upper horn, like on a strat up here, it changes the balance of the guitar. Uh, even a Les Paul is gonna be better than something like this, like a Flying V or an Explorer. Also, I weighed this guitar and it came in at just under seven pounds, which again, for a Flying V guitar is really pretty good. Okay, now something that is really interesting about the Gibson versus Epiphone debate is how the prices sometimes end up overlapping. And what I mean by that is if you get a really high-end Epiphone, that price will sometimes be more than a low-end Gibson, especially if you're shopping on the used market. As an example, some of the lower-end Gibsons, like the faded finish models, you can find those sometimes for under $1,000. And at the same time, some of the really, really upper-end Epiphone models or some of their signature models can be over $1,000. But here's the thing. I think in most of those cases, the super high-end Epiphone is going to be a better guitar than the bottom-of-the-barrel Gibson. If I had money to drop on any Epiphone guitar or Gibson guitar, but I wanted to get the best value, I would probably get one of the really nice high-end Epiphones, like the Richie Faulkner Signature Guitar, because that guitar is just specced out to the max, but it still only costs around maybe $1,200. And if you tried to spend that same $1,200 on a real Gibson model, you can get a guitar for that, but it's not gonna be that nice. I think the real question here at the end of the day is how important 
is the name on the headstock to you. As cool as this guitar is, and it is a really cool guitar, it plays great, sounds great, and it's a really good value, the name on the headstock, Epiphone, it still just doesn't have that status that Gibson does. Personally, I'd like to think that that doesn't really matter all that much, and one of the things that I like to do on this channel is to highlight guitars and brands that are maybe not as famous, don't have that same brand recognition, but are still really good guitars. And I think some of the Epiphones, not all of them, but certainly this guitar and some of the nice high-end ones do fall into that category. But tell me what you guys think. I mean, this debate has been going on for years. How good are Epiphones? How bad are Gibsons? Do the prices make sense? I really want to hear from you guys in the comments section below. Now, this particular model, I don't think you can buy these new anymore, but there are still quite a few of them floating around on the used market. So I'll try and put some links for some of those down in the video description below. I think if you're looking for a flying V guitar that still has the legitimate connection to the Gibson brand, but you want something that's not going to send you to the cleaners in terms of cost, this is a really good one to consider. Okay guys, so as well as links for the guitar, I will also have links for the amplifier I was using down in the video description below. I will also have links for my social media down there as well as my new picking instructional video which I collaborated on with Deacon Lacrosse. That is really cool if you guys haven't checked it out yet. As always guys, thanks a ton for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon.